Okay, reference frames and coordinate bases. So reference frames are needed in dynamics to define distance and time measures. So think of them as like your point of view when taking measurements. Um, there's this classic kind of train example that always seems to pop up where say you have a train. Oh no, oh, almost erased my train out of existence. Say you have a train and it's moving on its tracks at some speed and on the train you have this little green guy and he's fixed to the train. From the little green guy's perspective, as your train speeds along, this box is not moving. This box is not moving in the green guy's frame of reference. However, in this, uh, this purple guy, so you have a purple guy, and he's standing next to the train on the ground, he's fixed to the ground, and he's watching this train speed by. The blue box is gonna appear to be moving away from this purple guy. So again, just to reiterate, the green guy is fixed to the train. In his reference frame, the blue box is not moving. The purple guy is fixed to the ground. In his frame of reference, the blue box is moving away from him. Okay, so how do we define a reference frame? A reference frame is defined by at least three non-collinear points where any two points, this is the important part, where any two points in the reference frame must always maintain the same distance between them. So let's pick two points on the train. I don't know. Let's pick uh, this point and this point. If the train, you know, moves some distance down the track a little further, those two points are always going to be the same distance away from each other. Uh, the green guy is actually part of the train's reference frame because he's fixed to the train. So if we take a point on the green guy and a point on the train and the train moves, you know, some distance, you know, after some delta t, this distance is still going to be the same. So the box, the train and the green guy, those are all actually part of the same reference frame, the reference frame of the train. Uh, and then this purple guy is fixed to the ground. Take any two points on the ground. I'll take this point and this point. And uh, after some time later, these points are gonna still be the same distance apart from each other. So it's a reference frame. And here you'll see, we'll sometimes use reference frame and rigid body interchangeably because a rigid body is a reference frame. You know, take a look at your pencil. Um, <clears throat> take any two points on the pencil, move the pencil around in space, move it around, flip it around uh, in your hand. Those two points are always gonna remain the same distance apart no matter what you do, unless I guess you break the pencil. Don't break your pencil. Um, so your pencil's a, a reference frame. Your desk is a reference frame. Any two points on your desk will always remain the same distance apart. Uh, so in Newtonian mechanics, uh, it requires the existence of a non-accelerating reference frame. Uh, we always relate back to this, this what's called an inertial frame. Your non-accelerating reference frame is an inertial frame, is what it's called. And uh, that means it's constrained to only either straight line motion, uh, where at a constant velocity, straight line motion at a constant velocity, so it's not accelerating, or it's absolutely fixed in space. Uh, so a reference frame, if it's moving in a circle, to move in a circle, you have to accelerate. So, you know, a reference frame in a circular pattern is, is, is non-inertial. It's a non-inertial reference frame. Coordinate bases. Uh, used to let us define our vectors. So this gives us the directionality component uh, to take measurements. So say we have a reference frame A and it's this like squiggle. Uh, my professor would call this a space potato. And you drew a vector from point P to point Q. You know, now how do you define vector R? I mean, what do you just like wave your hand and say it's, it's going in that direction? It's like going over there. <laughs> you, you can't do that, right? You have to actually define it. So what we do is we um, drop in this coordinate basis. Uh, in this case, we called it E1, E2, E3. And now we can define R. We can say R is going some distance in the E1, some distance in the E2, and some distance in the E3. Boom. We just defined R. Um, with a coordinate basis defined, we can now express R in terms of E1, E2, E3. Yep. Important. The coordinate basis doesn't have to be fixed to some origin point in, in its reference frame. It can be anywhere. 
The coordinate basis just defines directions. Okay, so this is something I see a lot of people, they get it in their head that they have to, they have to put the coordinate basis at some origin. You don't, you really don't. You know, it might feel good to like put it, you know, at, at where you think it should go, but it's not necessary, right? You could have the coordinate basis over here. You could put it at point P here. Uh, that's fine. If you want to do that, you can put it over here. These are all the same thing. All of these are correct. The coordinate basis just defines direction, okay? I think of them as, as these, they're floating, quote unquote floating, but they maintain their defined direction. Um, so all of these are correct, okay? It doesn't have to be fixed to some basis point. And this is just something extra, uh, not really important, but I think it's interesting. Uh, define a coordinate basis requires a f either, you know, it requires a fundamental plane and two, a reference direction in the plane. And implicit in this are the two requirements of the above two requirements, this one and two, is the definition of the cross product. So say you have a reference plane here and a reference direction. So we're given these two. Well, we know the normal to the plane, n, and then if we cross n into p, then we'll get our third basis vector, right? So we'll have this, this, this. So we just defined our coordinate basis. We could also define our coordinate basis with three points, one, two, and three. We draw a vector from one to two, and we draw a vector from one to three. We cross A into B, and this defines our you know, normal. Uh, so this is A cross B. And then we can do A cross B crossed into A, and that'll give us this direction. So we just defined our three orthonormal unit basis uh, just from three points. So don't worry too much about this. <laughs> Again, just thought it was interesting. Um, this will, all this coordinate basis and reference frame stuff will become clear when we start doing examples. I just wanted to uh, expose you first to the, uh, the concepts so that when we start talking about them, you'll say, hey, Brian, you know, mentioned this before. Um, but we'll, we'll get into it. So next lesson, we're going to talk about direction cosine matrices, really useful topic. Uh, we'll use it in all of our examples. So direction cosine matrices next.